Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today I will show you how to create particles inside of Phoenix FD based on the smoke simulation and how to render them with a particle shader. This particle shader is really great to create different looks for your simulation, like classic particle, smoke, ink. You can also color your particle based on the RGB texture or velocity channel and create additive mode like with Kokatoa. So a lot of things that we will see in this tutorial. I will show you too how to export particles generated from Typeflow because sometimes it's really complicated to render millions of particles with Typeflow and we will render them with Phoenix. By the way, I just want to tell you before starting that I have created a Patreon. So if you want to support my work and the time I spent in this tutorial, you can do it with the Patreon. You can also have access to most of the project and tutorial I share with you on my channel. You will have access to all the texture, 3D scene, SGRI materials and more. You will just have to open the 3ds Max scene, link the asset and just launch the render if you want to have the same results as me. So do not hesitate to go and see. Okay, now let's go for the tutorial. So first, I will create a sphere for my simulation and duplicate this sphere because I want two emitter. I go to Object Properties and deactivate Renderable on my two sphere because I don't want to see my sphere in my final render. I go now to Phoenix FD and I'm going to create a Fire and Smoke simulation. So I create my grid like this and I can go to my grid tab in Phoenix to better adjust the size. Okay, now I want to add my two sphere to my simulation so I go to Helper and I create a Phoenix source. I can now add my two sphere to the emitter. I don't need temperature because I don't want my smoke to go up. You can select RGB if you want a selected color or a map and it's good for the moment. I go back now to my grid and in a dynamic tab, I deactivate the gravity. I increase the value of my quality because I want a lot of smoke in the time and you can also change the method direct symmetric and pcg are my favorite for this one i will use pcg but you can try by yourself to see the difference okay now i go to my output and i add rgb and velocity to export this value that will be really useful for the motion blur and for the color of your smoke now i just go to preview and i activate gpu preview to see the smoke in my viewport i can now run a simulation Okay, I have my smoke, but it's not really interesting, so I will add a turbulence. Maybe this value, like this, and I will run the simulation. Mm, good. Not bad for a test. Don't forget that the look of your simulation will also depend on the resolution of your grid. Now that I have a simulation that I like, I want to convert this smoke in particle, so I go to my Phoenix source and I activate particle. I can increase the number of my particle. 5000 is really good to start, but uh, you can really go higher, like uh, maybe 40,000 if you want a simulation like my ink or smoke simulation. You can modify the life of your particle in seconds with a lifespan and add a little variation if you want. And we will of course select RGB and velocity. It's necessary if you want the RGB color and the motion blur for your particles. I can go back now to my great simulation and deactivate temperature and smoke because I don't want to export my smoke anymore. I run the simulation and you can see that now we have particles based on the previous smoke simulation. 20 frame is enough. Okay, now I go to my render setup and I select V-Ray. Unfortunately, V-Ray GPU doesn't work yet with the port render, so we will use classic V-Ray CPU. I keep progressive for the moment, but for the final render, don't forget to select bucket. And I can really increase the noise value, one, because we only render point and it will really decrease the time render. Okay, now I can just create a classic V-Ray plane to see my particles above of my simulation. I just lock my camera view and I render this frame. As I said, it's better to use bucket, but to have a quick preview, we'll use progressive sample. So ignore this message. 
and we see nothing. <laughs> this is normal because we need to create a shader for the particles. So I go to Phoenix and I'm going to create a Phoenix form right here. And for the particle system, I pick my grid and I can select my two sphere. Now, if I launch a render, we can see that we have our particles in the render. Now I will show you what setting to play with if you want to improve your render. You can increase the diffuse multiplier to create a beautiful additive mode. You can increase your count multiplier if you want more particle. We will see this later. What I like to do is to play with the setting in the point tab. You can really decrease the alpha and we see the additive mode is way better and we can simulate a smoke or ink look with this method. You can play also with the point reduce. What I like to do is to increase the shadow strength that will create more volume and shadow in your simulation. Beautiful. It's a really good setting. I will just increase a little in my resolution to have a better feedback for my final render. Okay, now I will just try some settings. Point alpha, 0 0.5, diffuse 2. Okay, not bad. I can go back to my setting and play with the point alpha, shadow strength, diffuse multiplier to really create different results. It's up to you to try by yourself to create the look you want for your render. Okay, we don't create two spheres for nothing. It's because we can apply different color and setting to each sphere simulation. To do this, it's really simple. I go to my particle shader and I can maybe remove the sphere too. Now I duplicate the particle shader, remove all, pick the simulation, and I only select the sphere to have one particle shader for each sphere. I cannot change the color, and if I launch the render, we can see that we can mix the color based on the particle shader setting. We can also play with all the other settings like previously, alpha, diffuse, shadow, and we see that we can also mix the color and the look of the particle simulation. It's a really cool way to create different look and combination for your render. Okay, now I will show you how to create color variation inside of one sphere simulation. To do that, we will create a Phoenix FD particle texture and link it to the color map of your shader. Activate color map. Go back to the shader we have created. And for the source, we will pick the simulation and select the right sphere. Okay, we can select position color RGB, here RGB. And if I launch the render, Oh, bad. I forgot something, I think. So uh, go back to my shader. Okay, I see. I forgot to activate the color from particle channel. And now, uh, if I relaunch my render, yeah, we can see that we have the good green color. It's the color we chose previously for RGB export. You can, of course, use the map, as I said in the beginning of the tutorial. Maybe a gradient if you want. A really cool thing to do is to select velocity, remap color, and after the axis you want and change the color of course, and it will generate a gradient based on the velocity channel that we have exported previously with the particles. So you have a really cool way to create different type of particle, mix the color, the opacity, shadow, diffuse and more to really create the look you want for your particle simulation. Now I will show you, as I said in my introduction, how to export particles generated from Typeflow and render them in Phoenix so as not to be limited by the count of your particles. So I have here a really simple setup with particles on a sphere and I created a force operator with a simple curl noise. I will now increase my number of particles from uh, 4000 to 4 million. I run the simulation. Okay. Maybe further. Perfect. Frame 70 will be enough, I think. Now that I have my simulation with a high amount of particle, I will now create an export particle operator. Select PRT, the good frame range, and in the output, I will choose the location for my PRT export. PRT, OK. 
So I check if uh, all is okay. Now I can just generate my PRT files. Perfect, I don't need Typhoon anymore. Okay, now to load our particle, we will go to Edpur, Phoenix FD, and I'm going to create a PRT reader in the center of my scene. I can now select my PRT file sequence, and as you can see, we have all particles generated from Typhoon with the PRT files. Now I launch a render. We see nothing because uh, we need like previously to create a shader. So I go to Phoenix FD and I create a Phoenix form. And what I will pick to see my particle is the PRT reader. We can of course play with all the settings as uh, we done in the first example. And if I launch my simulation, we see the particle created from Typhoon. I can now add uh, if I want more shadow decrease the point alpha, play with the diffuse multiplier, basically all the settings that I showed you in the first part of the tutorial. I will now just change a little my setting, select a color for the particles, zoom in, and what is really great with Phoenix is that we can increase the particle count. So if I set a value of 2, we can see that we don't have 4 million particles anymore, but we generated 8 million and we don't have any problem or any crash, and the look is really interesting. So, it's over for this tutorial. As you can see, the Phoenix particle shadow is really powerful to create millions of particles and a really cool wonder. I hope the tutorial was useful to you. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, give me a thumb up if you like it. You can also follow me on Instagram and Beyond. And if you want to support my work or get access to the scene 5 of my project, you can go to my Patreon. See you soon for next tutorial, guys. Bye.